So, moving right along in the book of Job, in the Bible, um, Job, of course, is going to reply to his friend, who's trying to give him some encouragement. But they start to almost have like this back and forth debate, rather than just encouraging each other, or solving problems, or kind of starting to pick on each other. So Job goes, how long will you torment me and crush me with words? <laughs> well, you know, I was going to let you know, the, the book of Job only has, um, oh gosh, what is it? 40, how many? 40 something little chapters. 42. Yeah, 42. So I'm on chapter 19. We're halfway through. How long will you torment me and crush me with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I've gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and use my hum humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry, I've been wronged, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. None. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor. I was told I should be uh, ashamed of myself and um, pitied. And I'm a disgrace. So, all right. But at least I'm not Melania Trump. I haven't done a Playboy spread. I'm not Marilyn Monroe. I didn't go after being a president's mistress. I'm not some other people that I know that I won't say their names, but I sure do know their stories. <laughs> and I've got some stories of women that are like, you what? <laughs> I call them all my little darlings. <laughs> Okay, just wait your turn. You just, you guys, wait your turn. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head like I ever had one to begin with. <laughs> he tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his enemies. I'm so glad that I know God and Jesus, that I'm not their enemy. I'm so glad, even though I've been counted among the enemies of God just because of labels. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. I have camping memories that are fun. Some of them are great. Doing yoga on a fall, doing a standing tree position of yoga on a fallen log. That was fun. Having to blow up an air mattress because it kept leaking. The whole, I mean, that was fun in the middle of the night. Waking up with, yeah. And floating down a little creek with my kids and feeding the deer. Oxbow Park, that was fun. Oh, I remember sleeping in the uh, minivan, eight months pregnant in a parking lot in Portland because my ex-husband couldn't afford a motel room and all the campgrounds were closed. So that was fun with a bunch of kids sleeping in a minivan, surrounded by a bunch of homeschooling books, going to the Portland homeschooling convention. That was fun. Yep, yep, I've got lots of camping memories. I've got a good memory. Camping with my second boyfriend, as young teenagers in Oregon, camping and sleeping all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sleeping outside as a young teenager. Lots of uh, memories. Camping with kids is fun. I miss it. Anyways, that's the way the cookie crumbles. He has alienated my brothers from me. Wow, talk about alienation. We have a nation now full of aliens and alienating behaviors and no contact and just cut them off. 
When someone offends you, block them. He has alienated my brothers from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. Yep. That's what happens. My kinsmen have gone away. My friends have forgotten me. It feels like it some days, but actually I have some good friends that haven't forgotten me. That's nice. Thank you to all of my good friends who have not forgotten me. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out and still remaining my friend and seeing the bigger picture and other sides of me. Because I have the approach that if you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. That's a Mae West quote, by the way. Anyways, my guests and my maidservants count me a stranger. They look upon me as an alien. Even though I'm the one that's been here my whole life, stuck in Lane County, I get people come in my direction from other countries and states, and they look at me like I'm the weirdo. And I'm like, uh-uh, no, no, no. I, if you think I'm weird, I can show you weirdos. I know weirdos. I know some weirdos. <laughs> Anyways, I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. Hello? I'd like you to bring me a cup of coffee now, please. And I would like some strawberries and cream so I can sit on a fine cushion and sew a fine seam. And I would like also, um, I would like to um, have my um, hair fixed and I would like to have my nails done and I would like to have audience with the Queen of England so I can kiss her hand because of course I'm supposed to be able to uh, because my family told me, my brother told me, that one of my ancestors impressed the queen once upon a time, and the queen made an edict that the descendants of this ancestor should have the right to kiss her hand at any time they choose. Therefore, I would like to kiss the queen's hand, but since I don't have access to the queen, I will just kiss my own. Mwah. There. I can act like a queen of anything I want to because everyone else gets to do the same thing. I even have a cup that says queen of everything in my realm, which is just my cat at the moment. Here, Olive. I will show you. So my key kitty here, she helps me. She's my servant. When I sweep the floor, she lays in the dirt and that's a big help. And she follows me everywhere I go. She's like a little lamb, like a black sheep. <laughs> She's like a little black olive branch of peace. Because she purrs a lot, too. <sighs> Anyways, it's kind of fun to just try on different voices and different attitudes that other people seem to come by naturally. <laughs> Where were we? Alienation, acquaintances, estrangement, kinsmen have gone away, my friends have forgot me, my maidservants, and like I have those, uh, count me a stranger, they look upon me as an alien. I've been a servant to people, that's always fun, cleaning everyone's toilets. Oh, I summon my servant, but he doesn't answer, though I beg him with my own mouth. My breath is offensive, oh, sorry. My breath is offensive to my wife. Yes. Oh my God, some men can have horrible, rotten breath. Not you, sweetie. But some men can have horrible, rotten breath. They need to brush their teeth more often. <coughs> Don't cough around me. <laughs> Please. And um, dragon breath in the morning and sour milk breath. Ugh. Ugh. And um, I'm glad I don't have to smell that anymore. And... Some men that smoke, they got gross smoker's breath. They smoke, their breath smells like an ashtray and all sorts of ugh. But anyways, um, yeah, now our breath is offensive to almost everybody, so cover up. So my breath is offensive to my wife and I am lo loathsome to my own brothers. Yes, I think most of my family loathes me. Um, even the little boys scorn me. I've had that happen, except my neighbor kid thinks I'm pretty cool. 
my next door neighbor's kid. He thinks I'm cool. Played kickball with him a little bit. Um, but I've had some other strangers' kids. Jeez. Huh. When I appear, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. <laughs> Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped with only the skin of my teeth. Does your teeth have skin? I thought that was called enamel. So have pity on me, my friends, have pity. For the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Um, the couple that I lived with for eight months that I was trying to help get off the streets, that was an interesting experience. They let me know they weren't opposed to cannibalism while they're in my house. And I said, eat my neighbors, they're bigger than me. And I'm like, thinking they must just mean philosophically, I'm sure. But I was reaching out to help them, like a good minister would really trying to help them, giving them what I could and driving them to food boxes and letting them have a place to at least be off the streets for a little while. It just, it, their lifestyle was just a little too different and it just didn't quite work out. Um, and, you know, I was a little, it was tense, um, but they never hurt me or my partner. And I hope they did appreciate we, were, we did our best to help them for a while. Um, I still am concerned about them because of their health problems, mental health and physical health. And um, I, with this pandemic, I mean, I, I hope they're housed somewhere safe. Um, but we had quite the conversations about cannibalism and um, I figured it was just philosophically they were talking about, but they did like to eat a lot of meat. Um, and I'm not a really big meat eater. And I thought, well, I guess we all are cannibals in a way. Because if your body dies and goes into the ground, it deteriorates and it breaks down and decomposes and then the roots from plants will suck up the nutrients and the bugs eat and all that stuff. Even if it's just dust, I mean, the roots will suck up nutrients from past humans and then produce food, grass, the cows eat or animals eat or fruit, and nuts, all the stuff that makes food. So that's a big long filter system. So you're not supposed to eat people directly. Don't eat people directly. That's unclean meat. I, you don't want to eat, ew, yuck. No, humans are unclean meat. And it's in the Bible, you're not supposed to eat unclean meat. Humans are gross. And I mean, we just, we clean up and we try not to be gross, but humans have lots of ickies. So be careful what kind of, you know, humans you want to hang around and what kind of ickies you might want to possibly expose yourself to. I escape, okay, have pity on me, da, 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 da. we never get enough of my flesh. Oh, that my words were recorded. Well, they were recorded, obviously, and I'm recording these words too. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. That sounds like the clay tablets that were discovered that were written before the Bible or the Rosetta Stone or all of the artifacts from history of the stories of mankind from other perspectives, not just the Bibles. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Well, here we are. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. 
I have seen God. You want to see God, go look in the mirror. You want to see God, look into the eyes of a little baby. If you say how we will hound him since the root of the trouble lies in him, you should fear the sword yourself. For wrath will bring punishment by the sword and then you will know that there is judgment. Wow. So there is judgment and it can lead to the sword. So if you die, if you live by violence, you'll die by violence. Um, if you live a violent life, you're going to die likely a violent death. That's just usually how that works. That's just common. My dad told me that. Um, I prefer to live by the pen, the sword. Is my, the pen is mightier than the sword. I prefer to keep to myself if I have to. If I'm that pissed off and I'm that angry, um, just stay away from me then. Stay away from me for your own good. If I'm going to renovate a house and someone's not going to help and uh, pick up after themselves and they're going to be rebellious, uh, and I think it's pretty reasonable to take off a door. Um, and if that's not a reasonable response to being locked out on the roof, then sorry. Um, and if someone's going to look at me and think that I'm the material for being a violent criminal, no, no, I can introduce you to violent criminals. It's not me. No, uh, uh, no, I can have a criminal brain, but acting on it is very, very different. I am not some of the women out there in the world. Uh, and my ex-husband can thank me for that. 